what's up you guys how are you how's everybody doing as you can see i am in baby's room right now the only thing we have in here is the crib which i love it it's so beautiful i'll show it to you guys later on when we get uh, all the stuff for it but uh, i want to thank my oldest brother for it it was a gift from him and his wife to us and baby so uh, we love it and well i wanted to welcome you to my channel it's been a few weeks i recorded a bump date two weeks ago it was a 24 to 28 week bump date but unfortunately after recording the video for 20 minutes there was no sound and i recorded it with my phone and i don't see why there would be no sound but there was no sound and after that i was so bummed that i said yeah, i'm not gonna do it not right now so currently i am 30 weeks and three days and i decided to go ahead and do it today for the past six weeks all right here we go so i'm going to start talking about the things that i've already talked about before in previous videos uh for my pregnancy and the first thing the thing i've talked about the most i think is my sciatica pain yes i still have it i have it every single day it is better though a lot better the therapy the physical therapy like i've mentioned a million times before does help it doesn't get rid of it a hundred percent but those exercises really really help with uh, the pain that i feel on my hip and on my butt and doing yoga as i've also said before helps a lot it helps so much especially um there's specific pregnancy videos that are for sciatica pain which i love i watch videos on youtube um for first second and now third trimester pregnancy yoga and i love them they're really really great and those two things have really helped as well as the eight sheep organics lotion that i bought and i showed you guys on my last video i believe those three things in combination have been pretty pretty amazing in helping me i am definitely still sleeping on the sofa it's the only place where i feel comfortable enough to get sleep at night i still toss and turn uh but it's it's i would not be able to sleep on my bed the thing is my hip falls literally in the crack between the two uh like pillows where you sit on so it's perfect for me because it's almost like my hip is suspended in midair there's nothing touching it so that helps a lot with the pain as well and lately i've been switching positions and i've been sleeping sitting up more and not last night but the night before that I think it's been the best sleep that I've had this entire pregnancy. I was so comfortable. I did not want to get out of the sofa. It was so, so good. But obviously I had to get out, especially because my husband for the past like six days has had a neck spasm. So I've been having to take him to work. He's usually the one during this whole pregnancy that has gotten up earlier and makes breakfast and gives all of her breakfast and takes her out to potty and all of that. But 
this past week I've been the one doing that because he at the beginning the first few days he was not able to move at all he couldn't even get up it was so bad that I believe it was I don't know if it was Saturday last Saturday today is Wednesday last Saturday I was playing with my dog she was sitting on the sofa and I was standing in front of her and I had her little toy and I just wiggled it in front of me and she jumped up to get it but her two front legs bounced on my belly and it hurt so much she's only 23 pounds but it hurt a lot it almost after a few minutes it felt like my uterus wanted to pop i know that wasn't gonna happen but it hurt a lot but after a while it did subside but i was still nervous so i decided to call the after hours number which is uh like the hospital the labor and delivery women's assessment center and i told them what happened and they said okay you need to come in and i said do i have to <laughs> because my husband has a neck spasm he can't drive he can't even get up and i don't want to drive myself there i think i feel better i just wanted to see what you guys said she was like you have to come in but if you want i can have your doctor call you so a few minutes later my OBGYN or one of the one of them from the team called me and she told me that I had to come in no matter what because they needed to check the baby. So my husband said, oh, I'll come with you. You know, you drive, but I just want to come with you. And I said, no, because you're so stiff. You're in so much pain in that chair in in this emergency room is really uncomfortable and it's going to be a minimum of two or three hours and you're just going to be suffering and i'm going to be stressed out <laughs> because of you and i'm already stressed out so i'm just gonna go myself he said okay are you sure he insisted and insisted and i said no <laughs> i'm going myself it's okay i feel okay it's gonna be fine so I drove myself and I was there for three hours, I think, at least. They monitored, monitored the baby for like two, two and a half hours. The first like 10, 15 minutes, they couldn't find the heartbeat, but it was because she was moving so much. She would not stay still. You could hear her moving which was great. The nurse was like, well, she's a mover and a shaker. <laughs> but I kind of changed positions a little bit and she was finally able to find a heartbeat. So they left the monitor on for a while. After one and a half hours, uh, I couldn't take any more. The back pain was horrible. And every time I moved, like every time I tried to adjust my body to feel better and feel less pain on my back, the monitor went crazy. And <laughs> um, like the baby's heartbeat went down to like 70, 30, and then it was flatline. I was like, they're going to get scared. They're going to think something's happening to the baby, but I'm just, I'm moving so much. Uh, but they never, they really didn't come in until the end um and they told me oh another half hour so it was torture like the last hour 30 minutes or something like that it was it was torture for my back but i did it it was also boring but that's okay uh it's it was worth it maybe it was great so at around 11.30, I drove myself back home. No, it was midnight. Yeah, it was midnight. I got home. 
and I was so, so tired and I still had to take a shower because it's a hospital, one, two, it's COVID, so obviously I have to take a shower. Uh, so I ended up going and ended up going to bed about 1, 1.30 and the next day I had to get up to take my husband to work. He was finally able to move and stand and sort of move his neck a little more so I told him I would drive him and it was fine. I wasn't 100% painless but he needed to go. I felt like I could take, take him so I did. So I've been taking him the last few days. Thankfully I'm doing well. No more pain. At least related to that. I have some kind of pain every single day basically of my pregnancy. I don't know if it's because of my endometriosis or what but some movement or if I bend down or if I lift something that's a little bit too heavy I'll get some kind of pain but I'm kind of used to it now and everything seems to be okay so I think we're good on that front if I really need to I'll take some Tylenol and I drink water all day throughout the day so that's good we're good I have my uh, little book here where I write all my notes for these videos and it's been about six weeks so I'm trying to understand what I mean or at least remember what I have on here. It says pains throughout the day which I just talked about. Okay it says talk about appointment today and that was on March 4th can't remember what happened but that was the last prenatal appointment that we had the next one is the first week of april i do remember that when they weighed me they told me i had gained 29 pounds which on my records according to our records i gained 17 up to that point up to March 4th. I haven't weighed myself since then. But according to them, I gained 29 pounds, which is a lot. I don't want to gain a lot more. We'll see how that goes. So in that appointment, I also remember that we talked about the COVID vaccine. If I'm correct we asked the doctor first we talked with a doctor that's I guess practicing and then we talked to the doctor who is a professor at one of the one of the best universities here and we asked his opinion on getting the COVID vaccine and I know this is a hot topic and it's, I don't want to get a lot into it. Maybe I'll do a video about it. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. But basically he said that they are recommending uh, pregnant women to get the vaccine. The ACOG, which is the American College of Gynecologists, does gynecologists does recommend pregnant women to get the vaccine and they also said she and the student doctor the doctor practicing doing her practice whatever it is called both of them said that all of the doctors in that clinic that are pregnant so i assume more than one or two i i met one of them that was pregnant she probably had her baby by now they got the COVID vaccine and that if his wife was pregnant, he would encourage her to get the vaccine. And uh, I had up until that point, I had done some research 
and I was very positive about it but also very hesitant because at the end of the day you don't know what's going to happen in 20 years you know so it was I was very worried I had cried about it talked to my husband about it he has always said get it get it get it you know nothing's gonna happen everything's gonna be okay and I do believe that so he was like ultimately the doctor ultimately it's your choice and you do what you think is right so we did some more research after that I talked with my dad he is a retired physician he's a pulmonologist and he also encouraged me to get it he's done a lot of reading <laughs> all his medical journals that he gets like on a monthly basis i think or weekly or something like that and he's watched a lot of videos on medical websites and all of that and we've been reading articles and online and i also <laughs> joined some groups on Facebook for pregnant women uh, and COVID vaccine. And there's a lot of posts about people that have done it and everything has been all right. So we ended up deciding to get it. So I thankfully qualified, was able to get it what day did i get it let me see march 1st first that means my dates are wrong when i went to the doctor yeah i did go to no okay okay sorry the story that i told you about the doctor was the previous appointment which was in february and then march 1st i got the vaccine at one of the hospitals it was about 30 minutes away it was a great experience it was very fast i didn't feel anything there was barely anyone there and we made the appointment for the second dose for next week i think it'll be the 23rd in the morning bright and early <laughs> and then we had an appointment with the OBGYN the 4th of March and then we told them oh now I remember yeah we told them that I had gotten the vaccine and they were like awesome and we uh, it was very quick we saw the nurse practitioner and she is so awesome so sweet this is the second time I see her and the appointment went, was very quick and she just said do you have any questions you know she checked me everything she f checked my fundal height i think it was like 28 centimeters something like that everything seemed good and she asked if we had any questions and i asked about uh you know birth and delivery and the process and if the doctors were open to doing different things and she said yeah they're pretty open they're really nice uh, a nurse is gonna come in after and talk to you and give you a little packet of things and we have like a pamphlet where you can fill out your birth plan if you want a birth plan I was like yes I want to do that <laughs> definitely so it went by really quick she didn't elaborate on a lot which I really wanted to but I don't know I guess maybe closer I, I I don't know we'll see I've been watching a lot of videos about that stuff because I want to be prepared to so anyway she told me only one support person can be there so that's going to be my husband. I really wanted my mom at least to also be there because this is the most important thing in my life. And I always dreamed that I would have a lot of people in the delivery room. You know, my parents, 
my brothers, their wives, my niece, you know, not seeing everything, but, you know, in the process, I wanted to include them, but it's not happening. She did say things could change from now till May 23rd, which is a due date. But she said, if nothing changes, you can have pe people on video chat and you can record and do whatever you need. So I was actually very excited about that because I do want to document uh, my birth story. I hope my husband <laughs> remembers to do it and take pictures and all of that. We'll see how that goes, but... I'm excited about that part, but I'm hoping maybe something can change where my mom can be there because I really want her to be there. It's so special. It's been so hard so far for us during this pregnancy because we wanted, you know, to spend time together, go shopping for baby stuff together and all of that. So it's been, it's been pretty hard, but we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Getting back to the COVID vaccine topic real quick. I did want to mention the side effects. It wasn't very bad. I did not feel it going into my arm at all whatsoever. And I have on my notes. So I, I didn't feel anything. And the 15 minutes that I waited afterwards. Okay. I felt so guilty and so scared when I sat down to wait those 15 minutes next to my husband. I started crying and I didn't want to cry because I didn't want people to be like, what's wrong with her? Did they make her get it or something? But thankfully I had a mask on and I wear glasses. So I'm sure you couldn't really tell too, too much, but you can always tell when someone's crying. And I tried to contain myself and stop myself and I just could not. The tears would not stop stop coming. And my husband, you know, trying to console me and telling me everything's going to be okay. But I was so scared, you know. Had we made the right decision about this? Yes, we've done research, we've talked to doctors, etc. But who knows what's going to happen in 20 years. We won't know until the next 20 years, until our kids are 20 years old. So I'm sure everything is going to be fine. I believe in science and doctors, and I know everything's going to be fine, but it's still kind of scary. So I just, I couldn't stop crying. So after that, when I got home, I had a sore arm. And I was very surprised by this, but my arm became swollen. Like the entire arm and my wrist and my hand. Uh, until the next day when I woke up, the swelling had gone away. What else do I have on here? It hurt a lot. Uh, I got a headache that same night. Uh, the next day, the headache went away. I felt ram random abdominal pains throughout the day, which I don't know if it had to do with that or just with my normal random abdominal pains that I've felt throughout my whole pregnancy. So I wasn't really sure about that, but I did really notice it a little bit more different than usual. So I took note of that. And finally, I felt very tired, very, very tired. That's uh, one of the symptoms that my mom had when she had hers. She became extremely tired. Same with me. So... I just rested as much as I could for the next few days. My belly is definitely getting bigger. I'll show you guys in a little bit. I think I finally look pregnant with this shirt. I just look fat because 
this is a man's t-shirt <laughs> but i bought it from my husband and he didn't like it so i kept it i like it it's cool uh but yeah it's finally getting bigger when i wear maternity stuff i look pregnant finally <laughs> not just fat but i guess it depends on what i'm wearing so i bought a few more couple more maternity pants I bought some jeans but they were too stretchy and I hate stretchy jeans and it just looked so bad I got them large and they were a little bit too big plus the stretch they sucked <laughs> so I returned them and um, so I got a few just regular like joggers kind of yoga pant types those has been the most comfortable for me i ordered a couple other pairs of leggings which are so comfortable they're the best and then i ordered a few tops uh you know for like spring and summer unfortunately one of the sets was too small i got large and I needed to get extra large, but that's okay. <laughs> um, they look fine. And I'm still waiting for a few more that I should get on the mail tomorrow. So yeah, finally <laughs> ordered some maternity clothes. Which I'm excited about. And I'm excited that the weather is starting to warm up. It got up to 70 a couple weeks ago and it was magic but now it's back to 50s rain wind chill chilly weather feels like fall almost but you know we're getting close to april so april showers a lot of rain almost every day but that means we're getting closer to the warm weather sorry about that what else did I write on here? Oh yeah, we're still choosing a name. We had about 20 names and we've looked at so many websites, so many links, thousands of names, I think. Our parents send us ideas. My brother sends us ideas. And it's just, we feel like it's too hard. <laughs> to choose a name it's so weird like you're naming a person and they're gonna have that name for the rest of their lives unless they change it of course she can change it if she wants to but it's still hard uh then we had this short list and we took out all the names we had one name we were like we're really unsure so scratch it <laughs> and no i mean we still have that name but we're unsure unsure so <clears throat> we're waiting to see if something else appears magically that we like <laughs> another thing that i wanted to talk about was baking during the last actually four to six weeks i have taken up baking i have always hated cooking i have always not hated but disliked baking or doing anything that has to do with the kitchen and during the whole pregnancy my husband and i have watched like the great british baking show and just started watching other baking shows and my husband was like i wish you would make this stuff for me why are we watching this and i was like i wish i liked making that stuff for you <laughs> so for some magical reason the fat past month or so and a half or so i was like i'm gonna try baking so i tried baking i started with uh, some little cakes and stuff like that and I loved it uh, and then I made 
a the most amazing chocolate mousse cake I've tasted in my entire life. My family agrees. And then I tried making macro French macarons. And I became obsessed. Like I cannot stop making macarons. The first like I don't know, eight tries. They were hor absolutely horrible. They are so, so hard to make. There's so many different recipes and there's a few different methods. And it's very, very technical. So if you don't get the technique right, they're not going to come out. Like, you can eat them. <laughs> You can eat the shells, but they're going to be ugly or burnt or just not made right. It's so, so hard. I am obviously still a baby, a beginner <laughs> at making macarons, but I finally started making good batches. And I'm so happy and so excited about it. About it. It's such an accomplishment. It feels so good and they taste so amazing and the fillings are so good. So far, my favorite has been maple syrup, chocolate maple, little chocolate maple syrup macarons. They are so good. Uh, the last two batches that I made are Easter macarons, so they're shaped the shape of an egg it was hard to get that down but it finally did and uh they're really cute they're like speckled pastel colored eggs and the filling is pistachio which is they taste really good but they give me really bad heartburn <laughs> but yeah I'm still experimenting with different recipes and methods and flavors. It's so fun, so addicting. And like you get addicted to figuring out how to make them. It's almost like a game. I was watching a video yesterday of experts, people that just focus on this. They were saying, you know, half the fun of making a macaron is figuring it out, troubleshooting, understanding what's wrong with the last batch you made because so many things can go wrong. So many things. It's so insane. So I just stopped making cakes or anything else or cupcakes. I really want to learn and become good at making cupcakes and decorating them and making icing and I want to make cakes and it's so fun, but the obsession with macarons is so big that that's all I want to make. That's all I want to bake. So today my husband said, can you make a dessert that's not a macaron? And I said, okay, I'll think about it and see what can I make. That is not a macaron. We'll see. But it's fun. I'm excited. And it really helps me relax. It helps me pass time when I don't have other stuff to do. I usually help my husband with his office stuff. Uh, so every day I do something related to helping him. But... As much as I can, I try to practice making macarons. So I used to go to the office like three or four times a week. But I started staying home and just working from home. But I think tomorrow I'm going to the office and, you know, maybe I'll start going again once or twice a week or something like that. Because he really needs a lot of help. But yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's so good, so relaxing, and I love baking. 
and I know I have a long way to go, but it's it's great. So yeah. All right, here's the belly. Like I said, this is not a pregnancy top. This is a guy's shirt, t-shirt, which I love. But yeah, this is my belly right now. Like I said, I am 30 weeks, three days. It's so exciting. I love it. I love my baby girl. I feel her moving so much all the time they did tell me when i went to the hospital this weekend they did tell me to start doing kick counts so 10 kicks an hour and do at least you know morning and evening or whenever i think baby is more active so yeah that's my belly that's my my belly <laughs> I love making this these videos because it's not only to share with you guys but I want to be able to watch them in the future you know see what I was thinking remember and just have a record of everything so yeah uh, I don't know what else can I tell you I did my makeup specifically for this video. I really don't wear makeup anymore. Although it's still my love. I love, 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 love makeup. And I would love to keep doing tutorials. But I just don't feel like it. I don't know. I don't care about doing my makeup right now. And I know it's because of COVID. I don't go anywhere except the office. And sometimes on the weekends to see my parents and sometimes I see my brother and his family. But besides that, I have no reason to wear makeup. So I don't do my makeup. Otherwise, if there was no COVID, I would be doing my makeup all the time, every day. And then makeup that I've been wearing the last few times has been pretty natural as natural as possible because I don't know I don't feel like working on eyeshadow for 30 minutes or 20 minutes or whatever even though I'm obsessed with doing that obviously not anymore but I love eyeshadow looks uh, but yeah I'm just doing as natural as I can what I did today was my skincare routine uh, primer that has sort of like a tint and moisturizer and I did a beauty counter product which I forgot what it is but it's like almost like a BBCC cream it has a very light light tint and I got it way darker than my skin tone so it works <laughs> like a bronzer which I really like and a little bit of concealer and a little bit of bronzer and bronzer on my eyes and lashes and I wanted to do my lips the same color as my shirt so that's all I did today and a little bit of highlighter not too much but yeah and then this is just my natural curly hair I like it I like how long it is and how it looks probably need to cut the ends it's been a couple months I've been doing it myself but I want it to be as long as possible I do want to do my makeup for baby's birth we'll see how that goes we'll see I want to do it just because just because makeup is my thing but Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm sure this video is going to be like an hour long. Sorry about that. I had a lot to say and I didn't even talk about everything recently. Just, you know, relevant stuff. But yeah, thank you so much, future Rocio.
this is for you and baby and Herman. I love you. This pregnancy has been amazing, not without its things, but yeah. Anyway, I love you, mom, dad, family, brothers, nieces, nephews, everybody, friends, other family members. All right. See you guys later. Ciao.